Well, we just had the first technical difficulty in the history of Inappropriate Earl. It must be because of our last guest, the great drummer from Vinnie Vincent, Invasion, and Nelson, and Nitro, and Lita Ford just blew the sound system up. So thank you to Bobby Rock. Uh, my search for the elusive Vinnie Vincent got one step closer. But today we're getting back into the entertainment world. The acting world, the comedy world, these two girls have the hottest web series going right now, The Hub. If you go on watchhub.com, not come, um, so it's a uh, Saturday morning podcast, it's really uh That will give you our other <laughs> right. web series. Right. That might be <laughs> a better... Watch thehub.com. Yeah, thehub.com, the and then after that, go on uh, thehub.com, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, tickle your funny bone. Uh, so we have the great Claire and Katie. Hello. Hi. They are sharing a mic right now due to uh, something happening to the uh, third mic. But this is going to be an interesting podcast because I know nothing about you girls. <laughs> we know so much about ourselves, so <laughs> yeah. we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what makes a good uh, podcast. Answer every and all of your questions. Well, that could be uh, a double-edged sword with some of the questions. Uh, I met you through uh, a previous inappropriate old guest, the great Jake Head. The greatest. He is great. He is great. He is also on the web series. He's just so funny. He's Jake's a great man. Yeah. Uh, I met him through a person we won't get into, but uh, <laughs> that's another podcast. Uh, let me just say this unnamed person has... Made me see O.J. Simpson's point of view on things. <laughs> wow. Wow. But that's another podcast. Strong. <laughs> Strong. Strong moves. What Very exactly cool. is The Hub? The Hub is exactly what you said. It's a comedy web series. We shot 10 episodes. They're, you know, around 10 minutes each. Um, some people think they're funny. Uh, which is fantastic for us. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically, we like to describe it like Laverne and Shirley meets It's Always Sunny, but with just two disgusting, awesome, like South Shore mass hole towny girls yeah. that are super fun, very lovable. Um, yeah, it's, it's inappropriate, it's raunchy, it's fun. Yeah, we wrote it, produced it, acted in it. You know, we and did props and freaking set design and you know, we did yeah, and we did, did all everything. It was so this was our like passion project that we started a few years ago and we basically, you know, had this idea, wanted to create this web series, knew exactly what we wanted it to be, and at the time like couldn't get it to anybody in Hollywood. You know, we had a pilot written and knew no humans that were of any influence. Right. But like everybody else, we were like, ooh, crowdfunding. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's try to get $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, cousins. <laughs> on Indiegogo, which we did. Um, you got $10,000. We got $10,000. And then we thought that that was enough to shoot 10 10-minute 10 episodes, which, you know, proved to be false but we we did it anyway we made it happen how much did you need um typically if you asked anybody else in this industry they would double triple or quadruple that ten thousand dollars and more. still think that it was a little low um but we were like you know what fuck it we're just gonna shoot it we're gonna go it and we did awesome crew and an amazing cast and paid them in a lot of sandwiches and had a blast yeah. shooting it. It was like a 13 day shoot. And then post-production was kind of a nightmare until we got, you know, somehow mm. I convinced um, one of the editors from that show, the mentalist that's not on anymore. A great show with uh, the amazing Simon Baker. Yes, with Her. the amazing Simon Baker. So he was like, you know what? We're going on hiatus. Why don't we just cut the rest? I'll, we'll cut the rest of it at the Warner brothers studios we're like oh okay so yeah he was awesome jimmy gad shout out to jimmy and a shout out to simon baker for sure. uh yes. especially to simon baker right who being would, who would wander in and say what are you guys what doing <laughs> either of you guys attracted to simon baker um he's i think he's an objectively handsome man sure sure but yeah he's not my type 
Well, we'll get into that later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I liked him when he was in the Ray Liotta series, Smith, which was unduly canceled after three episodes. Mm. I think Ray Liotta's face in high def was just too much. <laughs> too much. Too much. <laughs> what happened to him? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But that's another podcast about Ray Liotta's. Uh, he's hurting yeah. for money. He's doing the whiskey commercials now. So it's true. Um, it's true. So that's uh, you know what the show is in a nutshell. It's just us being super super scrappy, and you know making stuff happen, and then and then miraculously we sold it to IFC. That's um, huge. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty huge. We were like almost done with post production and getting ready to release it. And then just a series of different people started to see it. Producers, people would option it. A showrunner found it. Plus Important friends. people. Yeah. Important people. Because this is why I really wanted to get you girls on here. You know, I want to give all my acting friends the idea that any idea can happen. Yes. Well, and the important thing is like when we had that we had the pilot and we were comp we didn't know anyone to even get it to and then at a certain point we were like fuck it we're just gonna make it we know how to and then we can show it to people and it's so much easier to send a two-minute teaser of something you shot that looks like you made it for two hundred thousand dollars and have someone watch two minutes of stuff and then be like by the way we made it for 10 and you laughed this many times and boom you know, and so that made it that, yeah, opened all the doors for us. And then we were able to kind of leverage it up and up and up until we were developing it for TV at IFC. Yeah. Now, was a show like Workaholics a, because uh, I know they started off as, uh, you know, basically, I think a YouTube series or something yeah, very. Totally. Yeah. Was yeah, that, that like was, a. Uh, that was not, our plan. Right. Just to workaholic the shit out of that. But, you know. Ultimately, that show didn't get greenlit as a series. Like, they didn't take any of the shows in that slate, which is all sort of industry terminology that the For listeners may not know. Like. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, it didn't become a TV it. show. But um, now everybody, you know, because that option ran out, now everybody can watch it on YouTube. So we're excited about that. Now, Claire, yes. I see you worked on the movie Torque. I did. <laughs> is that the Dane Cook movie? Was he in that? No, no, he was not in that. It was a, wait, no, it was which? Martin Henderson and Ice Cube. Oh, I thought Dane Cook was in that movie. I don't remember seeing him in that movie. Maybe he was in Motorcycle Boys or whatever that other one was. There was another one. Motorcycle like, Boys? All right. Motorcycle Boys. Men. Men another on classic. Motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. It was like... Um, I'm going to look up the movie that. on... Uh, tell me what your experience was like working on Torque while I... W Look up the IMDb page. <laughs> okay, Torque was amazing because um, this is okay. I will tell my fun little Torque story. So I was in the editorial and visual effects department. Meanwhile, I wasn't responsible for any of the visual effects. Just so you know, Earl, and everybody else listening knows, I was not responsible for that. I was a production assistant. I got those people coffee. Um, but after the entire movie was through post-production, everybody thought it was great. We went and screened it for all the producers at Warner Brothers. I mean, it was a, it was a legit budget movie, um, like $52 million, I think. And, <laughs> and Joseph Kahn, who's the director, brought his girlfriend. And his girlfriend, everybody knew, was a porn star. Um, Do you know her name? I think it was Buffy St. Clair or Buffy Jasmine St. Clair. Clair. Maybe. She did a gangbang film I watched. Oh, anyway. So she's in the audience. The rest of us are in the audience. The producers, the director. I mean, everybody is watching this movie on a big screen finally. And afterwards, she chimes in and says, Oh, my God. You could see Monet Majeur's beard in the last scene. And sure enough, it was the stunt double but you like they didn't cover it up enough and you could actually see that the the guy with the blonde wig on had a beard and it went by every single person except for the porn star Jasmine St. Clair Yes who was Eagle just eye. like right I was like oh um it wasn't my fault again I do not take responsibility. You were not in charge of beards. But beard. it went back to editorial for a few tweaks, and it ended up being like a 79-minute movie because they had to cut so many things out of it. 
Well, uh, I am looking up the cast, and Dane Cook was in this oh, movie. He is in that movie. Uh, with his what name in the movie was Neil Luff. Oh. So he must have not been I, that I memorable. I know, I know, I know. I don't remember conversing with him. I do remember one time Martin Henderson, who isn't a big star anymore, but he was in, um, you know, that horror film. The I don't TV know the man's. The, I, what is the TV one? Uh, he was Auckland, New um, Zealand. Uh, he was. Uh, in. Uh, he's in a lot of things. Seems yeah. like he's a New Zealand guy. Yeah, he's a New Zealand guy. Super cute, t- you know. And then would wear like every single time. And I was mostly in post production, but we were doing reshoots. Reshoots, and he had the leather suit on all the time. And so at a certain point, we were doing like green screen stuff, and he couldn't zip his fly because he had the gloves on that, you know, like the motorcycle gloves on. So he was like, Claire, Claire, could you come over here and do me a favor? And I was like, Oh, okay. Oh, Martin Henderson. Oh, the biggest movie star ever. No, he's not. But he's like, could you just zip my fly? <laughs> and I was like, sure. Why not? This is an honor. <laughs> well, face on love was also in the movie. Yes, yeah. he was. I do remember him. Any wacky uh, phase on love story? I like to talk about movies from 12 years ago. And yes, I know. This <laughs> is fantastic. Well, the there end. are burning questions yeah. about Torque. Like, I, I do think there was a movie called Motorcycle Boys that came out after. Or what the hell was that? That might have been like a Corey Haim, uh, yeah. a Stephen <laughs> Bauer Put movie. That, that shit up right now. The great Google Stephen that. Bauer. Um, anyway, no, I... The only other Torque story... I mean, meanwhile, the best part of the movie Torque is my name in the credits, in my opinion, because the movie sort of tanked. <laughs> well, I think that was like a big uh, vehicle for Dane at the time. He was huge at the time. So oh, I yeah. thought they thought they'd throw him in the movie and it would help. And, uh, you know, I, I think that movie went like straight to Laserdisc. I mean, it was... <laughs> it was... I love movies that aren't of the best uh, quality. Don't get... I, that last Expendables movie was fantastic. <laughs> now, Katie, I, I don't want to just, uh, you know, talk about Claire's past in the uh, film world. I see Sorry, that. Uh, well, well, you worked on Justified. That's pretty. Uh, that that's pretty was the most fun ever. With the great Walter Goggins. That's, sadly, my scenes were not with him. Who were um, your I scenes? He's with- amazing, but with Timothy Oliphant. Um, oh, well, he's he's the real just deal. Just the whole vibe of that set, you can. Like, I feel like a lot of times you go do TV shows and they move so quickly that everyone is just clearly stressed out about making the day and how much they have to get through. And so you sort of like show up and you're like, okay, here. Oh, okay. It's over. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks. And Justified, it's so clear that everyone loved working on it because they would take their time and be like, let's, uh, Timothy Olyphant's like, let's improv, do it, you know, say something and we'll, we'll come up with a bit. And, and I was like, this is awesome. And so, yeah, everyone was super nice, and they just do amazing work. And what did you do on Weeds? It was a big show. Uh, I was on Weeds. I um, played uh, in season four when they, in the episode where they discovered the tunnel from the maternity store to Mexico. Right. For those of you who watched. Um, a lot of my viewers watch Weeds. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, uh, I was the woman shopping in the store, trying on pregnancy clothing and getting in their way while they're like discovering the tunnel. And, uh, Elizabeth Perkins has like a huge fight, blow up fight with her daughter. Um, and I'm like in the middle of it and yeah. Wait, time out. I'm an idiot. It's biker boys. Oh, biker the Lawrence Boy. Fishburne one that came out at the same time. Well, like six months or so earlier. Now I've got to look up that. Uh, yeah. uh, Lawrence, the great Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, I don't really picture him in a motorcycle movie. Oh, but yeah. This was 2003, guys, and it's got all of 4.5 stars on IMDb. Um, but I want to see what the, how many stars Torque got. Cause well, what's the uh, Rotten Tomatoes of uh, you know, uh, Torque? Don't um, hold back. Yeah, I don't even know. Oh, Torque, however, got 4.0 4. 4. stars. <laughs> so Biker Boys is the massive upgrade on yes, Torque. Yes, on Torque. Well, I would um, say Biker Boys. Uh, let me see. We got Lawrence Fishburne. We got Orlando Jones, who I think is... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Who at the mm-hmm. time was also like... He was like the deal. Big, big deal. Yeah. I, th- I think he currently is falling off the face of the earth with uh, Philip Michael Thomas. Meanwhile, so. <laughs> Meanwhile you're totally care. dating me. <laughs> like... Orlando now, Jones. All of the listeners know how old I am. Ugh. 
Ugh. I was so teeny tiny when I worked on that movie. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, well, you know, the it was like in middle school. It was. Uh, yeah. You were in middle school. After, no, I wasn't. That is true. No. <laughs> now, uh, has female actresses, comics, directors? Yes. I mean, you guys are five tool girls. We are. Yeah. We're huge tools. <laughs> we are. Yeah. It's yeah. true. What's good to have a huge tool right. in Hollywood? Yes, it is. Uh, All told. What are the problems the being female in this business? What are the problems of being female? Um, do you face sexism? Do you walk into a meeting and it's all dudes and you're like, oh, here we go? We, um, I feel like we haven't run into that, thank God. And even if we did, we would punch people or something. Like, we just wouldn't stand for it. Like, you can't give a shit about what we do. Because, and, but maybe in the beginning when we did have a pilot and it was two girls. I mean, the thing is that the the tables kind of turned and Broad City was a smashing success and Amy Schumer was a great success. And so all of those shows getting, I mean, we had the pilot to this show um, and nobody would look at it. They were like, two girls, we don't want that. Um, until two girls were the thing, you know, and they started trending. Well, it's like Tina Fey and Amy Poehler and, you know, Amy Poehler's producing Broad City also. And yeah, just all of these, there's kind of been a wave. And now it's kind of an awesome time to be, not that everything is solved, obviously. But right. It's a great time to be two chicks writing comedy in Hollywood because people have just suddenly figured out that we can be funny. Yeah. And so now they're all looking for that. But the other way around it too is that up until this point like now we have projects with networks and we're you know sort of working in that direction but up until that point we were just in charge of everything we did and so you so know people had to listen up, to us it was like too bad so like it was still very dude heavy on the crew but we were the bosses so we yeah. so we didn't we didn't get any lip wrangle that cable <laughs> now yeah. I get a very. And also, here's your yeah. sandwich. Thank you so much for being here. We're sorry we yeah. can't pay you. That was the. <laughs> Is it hard to get people to work for free or under the guise of hey, if it gets picked up, if something happens, we'll take care of you down the road? Yes and no. I mean, yes, obviously, being able to give people money is preferable to not giving people money. Um, by the same token, we had a super fucking fun set, and so. Because of that, you know, we got to the end of this shoot, which was sometimes long hours, overnights, crazy shit going on. And at the end of it, everybody was like, tell us when season two is going to be like. So, you know, we yeah. made a point to make it as fun as possible on set and, you know, to not be a nightmare so that. <laughs> right. I like to give ourselves credit for just showing up and doing and because we were so proactive that people sort of just fell in line. And we also were not slave drivers either. You know, second meal, third meal, whatever, whatever we could do to go out of our way and show our crew, you know, especially our crew, how much we appreciated them working for us was, you know, that's the key. That's the key in this town. Do you plan on, like... Uh you know, like Kurt Sutter uses the same people on all his shows. Uh, do you plan like on um, like people who worked on the Hub? You can take them. I mean, you guys kind of have like a, a small circle that will work. Yeah, yeah. Um, as much as possible, absolutely, because yeah. these are the people who are helping us make these early steps. Right, and, and, and we owe them. them. You know, and they're good. And at, they're I mean, freaking talented. Yeah, all of them, crew, cast, cast everybody. Post production, yeah, they work yeah, their asses off. We found off. a lot of hilarious people making yeah. this web series. Mm -hmm. Now on Indiegogo, I know that I contributed to the uh, Quiet Riot documentary fund, mm -hmm. uh, and they had little prizes like for five hundred dollars. <laughs> you got like a uh, drumstick from Frankie Benali, yeah. mm -hmm. but for ten thousand dollars, you could actually be in the documentary, which I thought was crazy. Oh, that's fun. That's great. Yeah, but I mean, that's like, also crazy. Yes. I, yeah. I thought, like, shouldn't you have to be in the band to be in the documentary? Technically, yes. You, <laughs> you would should. think so. But then they probably just interviewed the donors and were like, why did you donate this much money to right. Quiet Riot? Why do you love the band so much? And right. And well, then, I started a Kickstarter the next day to do a documentary on that guy. Oh, oh the guy that's who good. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's great. And it got, like, $1,400. Uh, nice. Nice. Uh, 
I mean, there was a lot of you burning. Could go to you town. Could totally for fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred dollars for sure. But what did you girls give prizes for certain levels of? We had many magical we pieces of swag for many, the hub yes. fundraiser, which here was our our first and probably only like huge moron move of this entire process was that we were like, we're gonna raise. $10,000, but we want it to seem achievable, so we're going to ask for $9,500, <laughs> and then we're going to like go over, right? And then we actually raised that much, and we were like, oh, this is amazing. And then we remembered that we had to pay for all the swag we promised everyone, <laughs> right. and so we didn't actually have $10,000. We had so like $7,000. So we gave people travel mugs and shirts and like behind-the-scenes video and access then, and, and one of, name if a you, character. If you donated $150, I would ship you an entire batch of homemade chocolate chip cookies, which I made myself from scratch. Yep. And so that was also slightly time consuming. Yes. Like in retrospect, a lot of these were poor choices, but we, at the time, like that's what we could do. You know? Yeah. So what I, was the I most? I make damn good cookies. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I mean, you girls look like, you know. You didn't donate, so you didn't get any. But well, I didn't know of the project at the time. You didn't know time. at the time. I know. If this, if this happened today, you would be like, damn straight. Well, how about what would like say a hundred bucks have gotten me? Um, the cookies. Yeah, I think the 150 was the cookies. 100. Like 50 bucks was a t-shirt. 50 bucks was a t-shirt. Was a mug. And then if you donated like a thousand dollars, you were a producer, and right. so your name is in the credits. And but that's you didn't get to produce anything. It was just a name only. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like you a, just like got a, a credit. Yeah, a vanity credit. We should have just given producer. everybody credits because that's so easy. <laughs> just typing into your computer like do, 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 do. producer anything. it doesn't mean anything did you have like a huge like five thousand dollar you get to like have a threesome with you too or something um i know that would have been amazing yeah yeah i mean i don't mean to uh objectify you i mean no, but I appreciate, no. Like, for our yeah next kickstarter it's really just all about being a good entrepreneur, right but so. that's free sex for us too you know, well, I don't know what your uh, denominations are. I don't know what you, uh, what, you know, are you got girls married, uh, boyfriends, girlfriends? I'm married. This one's married. I get a very I'm Law and Order. The project, uh, you look like that girl from Law and Order, Kelly Giddish. I don't even know her. SVU. Oh, oh, yeah, that's a good thing. She's working, always okay, working. Yeah, sure. I am single. And what is that like being... <laughs> What is that like being a single woman in this male-dominated business? In this, it, well, L.A. is the worst dating town on the planet. I w just Awful. want to put that on the record. Yeah. Um, Why do you say it's, that? Because it's true. Because it's true. <laughs> and you just end up going on these ridiculous dates with people that don't make any sense. And then, oh, man. L.A. attracts a lot of... Interesting, Special, characters. interesting characters and they all have their own agenda and you don't exactly know what their agenda is going to be at any given moment and then with the dating apps it's just gotten worse i mean i've had terrible dates without dating apps but i've had worse dates with them well i may have an app for you oh you do because uh, this is a great we're gonna just diversify for a second from projects and stuff okay yeah. My, I used to do the dating, you know, eHarmony, Match, mm -hmm. uh, Tender, yeah. uh, Tenders yeah. for straight people, Grinders for gay people. Yes, yes. And what's your biggest concern when you go on those websites? You don't want to catch anything, right? Um, like STDs? Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. So maybe the three of or, us could... Or the flu. <laughs> well, I don't think you can catch a flu on yeah, Tender. That's true. But what about a dating website? Because you girls are creative minds. And this is the yeah. first time I've ever pitched this to anybody. Okay. <laughs> We're ready. Yeah, shoot, Earl. I'm ready for it. A dating website called Hiver. And the first three letters are in capital. Yeah, H-I-V yeah, yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. and then a little R. And Maybe a, not even an E, just the tiny R, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Very techie. It's a dating site for people with full-blown AIDS. Wow. Mm -hmm. Think That's about really it. Really smart. Yeah, you we have can it. Hook up with each other, right? Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Here are all the people that I can hook up with with no guilt, right? In Los right. Angeles, you have it. They have it. Mm -hmm. You can't catch it twice. Let's meet for drinks, right? Yeah, yeah. I think we did have this idea this once upon a time. This, could this blow is up. in season two. About of starting, the hub. <laughs> did have a pitch for starting a, a dating website where you match with people based on having the same STD. So yeah. it just really branches it out to like. If you have gonorrhea and I have gonorrhea, right? Let's make that happen. Well, maybe we we got our next web series. Yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't limit yourself. 
I mean, Hiver is like a great. Uh, I like that name. I know, but that I name think you can great. really expand the usability. And this was yeah. you, we did think about this. This is so funny. <laughs> so That's no, crazy. See, this is great minds thinking alike it's right true. here. There's We're just having, a synergy going yeah. on. Um, no, and we, <laughs> but we had it. You know those like testing vans. The eight, with Blair Underwood's picture on the yeah. poor Blair Underwood. And then you just walk in and get your diagnosis. We were gonna we were gonna put another van next to it that's like dating van. Like right. and then diagnosis to the food truck next door. Right. <laughs> get in that van and find out who else has your same one. Right. Yeah. yeah. So well, you could do it all at once and figure out, oh yeah, we should go out next Thursday. I have chlamydia, you have chlamydia. Yay! Everybody wins. <laughs> Well, I think we found. Uh, it, it, now, this what's going on? Market gap. This is a market gap. Yeah. I think. Well, yeah. thanks to Jake, you know, it's a, it's fate. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just great people bringing great people together mm-hmm. to do great things that change the world. Right. I'm, I like it. This is how workaholics started. <laughs> on a podcast, <laughs> talking about an AIDS dating <laughs> website. Mm-hmm. And we are in West Hollywood, so it's. Yeah. It's there. It's apropos. This is, yeah, this is going to happen mm-hmm. soon. I mean, I don't even have to see the movie Philadelphia. I just go to the market. Guys, the Kickstarter right. will be available tomorrow. <laughs> I'm telling you, if we... Reasons for five grand. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I'll film it. You girls can... Well, you're okay. married, so I guess it'll have to... Uh, I can film. have to be you and me. Uh, yeah. And a third. And, and a third. A, and whoever's yep. the donor. Mm-hmm. Now, do you find the dating world for a, a woman in the entertainment business is hard because you're... You're only around actors, uh, people trying to make it, so they might see you go, oh, may, you know, because I'm only actors, around comics. Yeah, the actors all dress better than I do, so when I go out with a dude, they're just like, oh. You know, and, and hopefully they claim to be straight. You never know. Yeah, I mean, what is uh, straight yeah, in this day and age? true. There's a full spectrum. You meet a lot of people. And so, and I, and I give a lot of people a chance you know, I will go on the dating app and say, oh, okay. And then this one guy, this one guy would just refuse to ask me any questions about myself. Just talked about himself the entire time. His name was Paul. We're not going to say last names. Paul Stanley from Kiss? No. Weirdly. No. No, it was not him. Um, well, he might so play. at a certain point, I just, I just yelled at him. I was like, just ask me a question about myself. And he was like, oh, so you mean like you want to play Truth or Dare? And I was like, okay, sure, yeah, play truth or dare. And he's like, on a scale of one to ten, how do you rate me? And I was like, no, That's I'm not done. a question about myself. <laughs> it, n- yeah, Ugh. that was that was an interesting date. Yeah. And what app did you meet this uh, buffoon on? I met him, I think on Match. I think on Match.com. I'm not on Match. I was only on Match for like a month because my friend Erica sent me a Groupon. And I was like, all right, <laughs> fine. <laughs> I was on Plenty of Fish. I had to get out of there. There's psychopaths on that thing. Yeah. Oh, there were there were some psychopaths on Match.com, too. That was... No, I feel like... And now I'm on Hinge. Um, and Wh- which, I, What's I that one? Using, Hinge is the friend of a friend one. So it links up with your Facebook and then whoever your friends with on Facebook, they like it connects you to only dudes that are also friends with your Facebook friends. Okay. Yeah. Now are you worried well I guess you're not, but uh like I like my anonymity on these uh, sites. You, you know, like I don't want people to go, Oh my god, Earl's on Tinder. Right. Are you worried about people going, Oh my god, Claire's on uh, Hinge or Hiver? Um That's- a very mm. generous assessment of how yeah famous we're so famous and powerful we are. we're not that famous yet <laughs> but so, i mean um, soon any oh you girls are like the i get a very uh south park vibe from you girls like yes you know it could be the next uh i agree that's our, yeah sure. we never thought of it that way but that could be our plan yeah yeah one of us has to start animating though fuck like drawing <laughs> it's a lot of work <laughs> are you would you guys like to develop uh an animated series, or do you like uh, you know live action? At, at this point in time, we are up for anything that will pay our rent. 
Although our next passion project is going to be a movie where lots of people get on motorcycles. <laughs> no. With beers. It's oh, like Torque right. meets Biker Boys. Right, yeah, right. But we're going for a five out of ten star rating. None of that is true. We are we are working we'll on we we are working on a teen comedy right now. Can I be like the creepy teacher? Please. Yes. Actually. Yes. Believe me. Yeah, we haven't seen this inappropriateness that you claim to have yet or well i try and be classy that you're naked right now i don't well i do have a great dick pic but you know that's the whole i can't show that to you girls it's like you know it might get me cast in your next project <laughs> that's right you never know right. but i would not not I, well i try that's too much of a tease that's yeah well it's just the lighting it's it's a full body shot mm, so it's like yeah. uh taken up well it is you know you got to hold the camera at an angle and uh, stick. you know yeah. all yeah i don't do that no <laughs> but i always wonder if a porn star could have a selfie dick like some of them oh, right yeah like POV, like right, down. right that would extend but the your dick would extend further than your reach would perhaps. not uh lexington steals that's it's impressive what he has yeah now katie we've covered claire's Dating. <laughs> dating life how did you meet your husband is uh i met so my husband is also a he's a tv writer he's okay a comedy writer. can we say what i, I don't want to like right. yeah can, we can totally can we say what uh, shows he sure um so he uh before we were dating was writing on weeds that was okay. one of the first uh times that i met him and uh and then uh is currently working on the brink on hbo which is um an amazing show if you're not watching it with uh, tim robbins and jack black being and pablo schreiber being really funny and saving the world i love pablo schreiber I mean, he's he's awesome the wire was just yeah like season I mean, he's two. amazing and everything orange everything um so yeah but we met where i was living in new york still and i uh, was in a play of his and he came he didn't have anything to do with like the production part of it but came out to see the show and we talked for like two hours after the play and we were both dating other people but i was like you're funny and he's like you're funny and that was that and then when i moved out here i was like hey i know four people and you what's fun to do in la and the answer was each other <laughs> well okay um, that, that's get, let's no, get I mean, into that like we just started hanging out and doing fun stuff well, i know what hanging out means no actually legitimately we we were like just doing fun stuff together for about six months and then one day i was like i think dave and i might be dating and then like everyone around me was like duh we all can tell that you guys are in love but you have no idea um so yeah and D dave also had an agenda during that time but i was like you're just so fun to hang out with Love. what was his agenda just to get some action no, 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 to like, to like. Oh, to get to, married. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to get married. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, most guys. He sort of got it right away. And he was like, oh, yeah, the, well, let's like, you know. Did you sleep with them on the first day? No, 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 no. No, we were legitimately we were friends for like six months or something before anything happened. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I was just like, you're so great. I just want to hang out with you all the time. And then I finally like got the hint. Now, is it hard being married to a writer? He's busy writing. You're busy producing, creating. I mean, do you it's guys see each other a lot? Both. It's both. They never see each other. It's weird. We actually no, don't see he each other very often. He sees me so much yeah. more. That's the secret to a healthy relationship. It actually is that we, like, people often comment that we are so independent that we are almost, you know, most times people see us, they're like, oh, what's Dave up to? I'm like, oh, I don't know. He's uh, doing something tonight, whatever. And then we, like, you know. When we hang out, it's awesome and fun and whatever. But it's good. It's it's good and bad. Uh, our house is like at times a neurotic tornado of of both of us trying to write things. But we like purposefully put our office spaces in opposite corners so that we can not run into each other or run into each the other. Corner and, is called my living room. <laughs> well, a lot of times I'm in Claire's living room also. Yeah. Um, but it's good. You know, sometimes we like bounce jokes and pitches off each other um and i also was when we got together i was just acting at that point i wasn't writing so it was a good like balance um but yeah good yeah it's awesome they're a cute couple he's the best they yeah. are <laughs> we, we all like holstein Not to get mushy, but we're, we're a fan yeah so <laughs> how did you guys connect in the first place because i know huh. that claire you went to columbia yes i did katie you went to harvard i did to elite schools you meet there or out we here met during a math competition between the university <laughs> no, no none of that is true no um i was living in new york for the first like three years after college and so when i moved out here um 
a friend of mine recommended me to an acting workshop, like a class. Um, and so I showed up and my first assigned scene partner was Claire Garrity Mott to do a uh, single white female. A scene. Love the movie. I was the crazy one. The, so you were the uh, good Jennifer cast- Jason Lee. Good casting right out of the gate. I could see that. Right? Right? Like that could totally, it was an, it was an epic scene. And you're the uh, Fonda. Yeah. Yeah. Um, part. So, uh, so we went, so I went over to Claire's place to rehearse and her place is like covered in photos of her with a guy that was in my class at co- in college. And so I was like, oh my God, get out of town. Did you date Steve Mott? And then I was like, oh wait, we just met. What's your last name? That's my brother. No, that was so. gross. No. You dated your brother? They did not did date. Not. They just no. hug a lot in photos, which then was understandable. Because it's my brother. Right. Yes. So anyway, so it turns out I knew Claire's, both of Claire's brothers while I was in school, but just never had met Claire or knew her. And then out here, yeah. fate intervened. Fate, destiny. And you guys just. Ryan was my destiny. (laughs) And you guys are locked for life creatively. Work wives. Yeah, we officially got work wifed, um, married, uh, what, like a year ago? I don't know. Uh, No, more than that. More than that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. We're in it. Mm -hmm. We're committed. In it to win it. Yeah. Yeah. What's next? I mean, the hub is still pumping strong. Well, the hub is so the hub is out now, which is super exciting because right. after so, watch so it. many so much. Where time, can people find it? Watchthehub.com. and YouTube, right? Yes, but you prefer yeah. to w- well, people to go. It's easier it's to easier watch. To find all the episodes in a row. One stop shop. Thehub.com. Yeah. And Facebook, there's the... What? Facebook, the yeah, hub has like a fan page. Yeah. You can like us on Facebook. You um, can like become our Twitter followers and stuff. We'll, we'll tweet at you all the time. We will. We have nothing better to do. What's the Twitter page? Um, what is my... My Twitter name is C underscore Garrity <laughs> underscore Mott. <laughs> That's so, probably one too many underscores for my like fan base. the single worst Twitter name. <laughs> I, I fucked up on creating my Twitter <laughs> account, and I made it far too complex for anybody to find me. But mine is at this is KDO. Better. K-A-T-I-E-O. Better. Better. Yeah, you better spell that out for She's my the fan base. Of the <laughs> but does the hub have its own fan page? It's at, don't, don't we have at watch the hub? We're the worst. No. We're so I'm gonna bad go, at marketing. I'm going to go right <laughs> now. I'm going to hit the Twitter page. Uh, if you go on at watch the hub. On Twitter, you guys only have forty followers. You got to step it up. I know it's no excuse, Um, but you have to do it. We are gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Yeah. I know that's why you guys got to get on it now. Now we're like officially. Now that we're officially work married, um, we have all these new projects. We're developing something for ABC right now. Let's talk about that. Another comedy. I don't know. I don't know how much we can. Oh, oh, it's it's one of those. Secret and exciting. Um, but we're really excited about it and it would be another project that we, you know, if all goes according to plan through all the steps, we would get to like produce and write and act in and do all the jobs again, which is Mm -hmm. our favorite. Well, without getting into the the specifics, uh, you know, there's a lot of bad shows on TV. There are. And I often wonder how do good ones not get on? Like, yeah, we agree with you know, that. like I watch Bar Rescue on Spike TV. It's like, how does this show on the air? <laughs> I mean, like someone took this to them, and it's on. It's not just on once a week. They really just marathon like, it. Um, right. Like, just um, the other day, we had a writing meeting in the background of a shoot for Shaws of Sunset. We did. We were there. Yeah. We were in a mm-hmm. cafe writing, and then they came in and did a whole shoot, and we just kept writing on our laptops in the yeah. back of it. Yeah. Is it tough? Shaw's the Sunset's another one. <laughs> how that shows on the eye. I don't think E says no to it. No, that's a Bravo show. My, a Bravo show. I don't want to get. But it's all good. I got a date out of it. It's true. Yeah. With one of the Shaws? Not, not a Shaw. Shaw. Not one of the producers. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, people is are, it? People are just asking for my number left and right. I don't know what's. Well, you're hot, there. babe. I mean, I went on the hub. I'm like, wow, both girls got. No, this is before I knew you were married. But, but I'm like, that's okay. Yeah, wow. she can still be it. hot, but you just can't do her. Yeah. Are you talking to me specifically, or? I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying, in general, Humans. you can still think a married woman is hot, but you just can't do anything with her. You know. Oh, absolutely. That's the lame part about it. But whatever. Yeah, that marriage yeah. boy, it really. Attention. Yeah. Yeah. Her hubby's a lucky guy. He knows it, though. He he knows it. He told me. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, 
I mean, I you know maybe he can come on for the sec. <laughs> but this is uh, in case you notice, girls. I don't plan the questions. We just hit <laughs> we just yeah shoot the shit and it's then you know whatever we, comes out comes out. We just hit record and then I stop mm-hmm. two seconds later when one of the mics blows mm-hmm. up and. Right. Uh, That's a good quality to have though spontaneity. Well, I'm like well it is because I that want on your dating websites and stuff. You well, know. I'm out of the game now. Uh, oh, are you married? No, no. Uh, I just, um, quit. you know, <laughs> quit the game. Quit everything. My social life is kind of like a buffet. You see, everything's spread in front of me, but I don't eat all of it. So uh, uh, that's a Paul Stanley quote. Mm, nice. I like to give credit where credit is due. Right, right, yeah. uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm only around comics. It's a tough group to date. It's fair. Yeah. It's tough. It's, yeah. I mean, it's tough. <laughs> Uh, so it is a bother, like you girls are writing legitimate creative endeavors. Does, does it bother you when you see a show like Shaw's the Sunset on the air? Not, not that, that partic- like that such garbage gets on the air and you girls have to struggle so much to get like a, a legitimate sitcom or whatever it is out. Right, right. Well, yeah, that's true. important lesson that we learned early in the process and thank God we had an amazing uh, showrunner working with us for the IFC project, Les Firestein. He's the funniest and also was just a great mentor. And you know, he's one of those guys that's like, get ready. It has absolutely nothing to do with merit. Anything can torpedo it for any reason at any time. You can't go through any of these processes, like expecting it to be fair or make sense. And so if you just let yourself accept that, and you just do your best, you know, you do the best you can. At least for us, in the case of The Hub, we had already shot it, so we could at least put it out. Like, so many amazing shows just go away forever when they don't get picked up. Um, but we're trying to, you know, we're trying to make better things. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's for the amount of years that we've been in this town and sort of watching the political game that Hollywood is, you know, once you understand how it works, you have to, you know, like, it's hard to say, all right, I'm going to change it tomorrow. And this is what's going to happen. You know, you sort of have to play the game until you get to a certain level where you're just like, you know what, and now we're going to make really good stuff. You know, so it's perseverance. It's in you know elbow grease it's just get in there get whatever you want done done if people like it they like it if they don't then whatever but also it's an amazing like it's an amazing time right now because all of everyone we meet this year every network every platform they're all you know finally right now realizing that laptops are like not a trend and that people will probably continue watching tv on them indefinitely and so the number of platforms making digital content for cheap like giving access to brand new people is massive compared to ever before so like yay for lots of companies um figuring out what netflix figured out a super long time ago but you know and also you know once we finally landed you know we had to sell a tv show to a real network in order to finally get representation in this town but once we finally did get representation the you know the quality of those people and we love our managers to death echo lake great great people um now don't be uh my acting friends out there uh emailing echo lake entertainment don't do that because they're they're busy uh, working on our careers right now (laughs) Katie and Claire recommended me. Uh, ah, you know. We just we just like to give shout outs to like good people who are. Well, it's just about like finding someone who is your people. Yeah. Right. And then it kind of like becomes a, a super happy right. relationship. But it's you know is our recommendation to up and move to Hollywood to become superstars not, not if necessarily you can think of anything else that you could possibly do and <laughs> right. live with yourself. Yeah. But our recommendation is, to all those people is to make your own shit. Like, this is what... I mean, and that was so much of the class that we met in, that sort of... Uh, which is the Professional Artist Workshop, Gary Imhoff. He's amazing. Oh, more shout-outs. Best teacher ever. Um, and, his, you know, so much of what he taught us was 
like 20 years ago, you your only option was to book a role on CSI and be the barista in something. And now it's all about fitting out. You know, you don't like, yes, book shows that exist, but also make your own thing and show people what you do that's different from what other people do. Like, otherwise, how does Jack Black exist? How does Sasha Baron Cohen exist? How does Will Ferrell exist? They don't show up and you know be perfect casting for csi like this is an amazing time so make your own shit it's cheap it's easy and then you can just show people what you do yeah i mean that's what rob schneider did his show was canceled on cbs and he just said fuck it i'm gonna make my own show and it just got picked up on netflix yeah he financed everything Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. so i mean the fact that they wouldn't even pick up kimmy schmidt and then crazy yeah that they made that nbc was like nah no, the web the web has made lots of things possible that previously were not possible. But yet, a show like Big Brother is literally twenty seasons Seven in. Thousands, yeah. It's crazy well, <laughs> because it's cheap. It's cheap to do unscripted content, right? So you don't necessarily you don't pay writers. You don't pay a lot of that stuff is non union. I mean the the reality boom was because it was really cheap content. And you could get, you know, a skeleton crew together and go shoot people who just people you're really, also not paying to you know, want to exist. eat up TV time. Yeah. So there's, there's also like a huge dichotomy right now. And like half of the TV shows that exist are just better than any movie. The best writing out there, the best actors that you know, just unbelievable. Yeah. Cable content. cable shows are amazing half, right now. Yeah, and then there, and then the other half of TV shows are the kind of thing you want on in the background while you're mostly making dinner or whatever, you wow. know. And so those still need to exist for the people who want that, but you know, for people who want to watch it and like it, <laughs> there's also amazing things. Yeah, like Sons of Anarchy was. Uh, yeah. Or Mr. Yeah. Robot. Oh my God, I Mr. love Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot. Uh, that new uh, show, The Affair, on uh, HBO. Mm-hmm. Narcos. The Affair is on Showtime. Uh, my bad. Okay. Showtime. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I was I was on, thinking of Dominic I mean, West. He's he was in The Wire. I got yes, my. Uh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And uh, my favorite guilty pleasure movie of all time, Rockstar. Yes. Right. You know with the, Choice. you yeah. know great Marky mm-hmm. Mark. And uh, <laughs> Mackie Mac, you gotta pronounce it right, dude. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Are you guys big uh, fans of the Wahlbergs? Oh, heck yeah! I do like oh, the one in uh, Blue Bloods. He's good, Donnie. Donnie, I think. Donnie. he oh, was a, new yeah, kid. new kid on the block, of course. Well, I'm a Backstreet Boy uh, oh. guy myself. <laughs> well, the new kids are from Boston, and we're from Boston. Well, she's from New Hampshire, but you know, the same new thing. Kids were the precursor to Backstreet yeah. and Sync. They really, you know. Well, right. if you girls are from the way for white right. boy bands, <laughs> you know I'm the a original big Close new edition. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, yeah, and the new edition was uh, the urban boy band, I yeah. guess you'd say. And then the new kids were like, "We're white, but also urban." And then we <laughs> all we wear a we lot of denim. Yeah. We wear so much denim. Watch out. Well, I'm a Cars fan, and they are, of course, are Boston's uh, favorite son to older people. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yep. I mean, you've heard of the car. Also, yes, 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 of course. Aerosmith also comes to mind. Yeah, yeah. But the band Boston. Yes, the band Boston. The mighty, mighty Bostones. Um, let me see. Uh, what other? Uh, well, uh, one of my favorite. Uh, they were a boy band. No one's heard of them. They were from the Boston area called the right. Click Five. Click Five, I have heard of. And I, they're not super popular. Well, it goes along with like a movie that you thought would be huge and it just wasn't. These guys were like in sync and the Backstreet Boys, but they played their own instruments. Yeah, nice. that was a fatal flaw. But they were good at them. I mean, they were like really talented, that and they their, that was their huge mistake being an actual band. Yeah, right. <laughs> they dressed so, up in suits and. Uh, so like, this is my Aerosmith story. You want to hear my Aerosmith story? Is a pig stick pork? Of course I do. <laughs> So when I was 16, meanwhile, I was like a ridiculous 16 year old and, you know, the grunge era had come in and I really sort of knew who Aerosmith was, but not a lot. And I was, you know, wearing baggy pants and flannels and I was, you know, more into that genre. Um, But one of the so the the guitarist Brad Whitford, um, his son was in my same drama class, but he was 13 and I was 16. But it didn't matter. He still had the biggest crush on me, which was okay. 
Um, so he was like, do you want to come to an Aerosmith show and like be backstage and everything? And there was no way I was going to say no to that. So we went, the, you know, and 13 and 16 is a big age gap in, you know, from so, like middle school to high school. Statutory uh, yeah, exactly. situation. Don't do it. Yeah. So I go on this date, quote unquote, um, with Zach, which is really fun. But, you know, I know sort of like sweet emotion and that that's it. <laughs> so, Coming in your hand. Yeah. So meanwhile, the Steve and Tyler, we're just like backstage um, at this venue called Great Woods, which isn't called that anymore. And Steven Tyler grabs my hand and drags me on stage during Mamakin and puts the microphone in front of my face. And first of all, no, but not even Aerosmith fans know the words, the words. to Mamakin. <laughs> and I certainly did not know any of the words to Mamakin. And he wanted me to sing along. And I was just like, deer in the headlights. I, could, oh, I couldn't even move. I was just like, oh. And meanwhile, everybody else from my high school is like in the lawn seats. <laughs> they made fun of me so bad. They're like, oh, Claire, we saw you on the Jumbotron. You didn't know the words to Mamakin. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. Who does? <laughs> but that's my that's my Aerosmith story. He also Steven Tyler also said that I smelled good. He was like, "Ooh, you smell good. What are you wearing?" I was like, "Oh, deodorant. Thanks." <laughs> Do, now, are you leaving anything out? I get the feeling he said other things to you as well. <laughs> no. Come on, it's inappropriate, Earl. Yeah, no, that's all he said to me. I mean, he did, you know, take a huge inhale of my person, and I was sixteen, and I was just like, ugh. Um, and, and Liv was there too. I met Liv Tyler. Um, and then there was an Aerosmith video game, like an arcade game that Zach and I played, which is, he's like, Oh look, there's my dad on a video game. Which <laughs> did you kiss him at the end of the night? Um, I did not kiss him at the end of the night. I, I feel like I, I think I drove cause he couldn't drive. <laughs> yeah. I don't think many 13 year olds can drive. <laughs> yes. So. No, 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 We didn't drive. We, the limo picked us up. That's dumb. Yeah. He must have tried to kiss you, I though. I went in the limo. Um, not that night. There was another episode of that that whole saga. Meanwhile, all the kids in high school, they were terrible. They called me a pedophile for even hanging out with Zach Whitford. Um, but Zach was awesome. Like he, Meanwhile, is like the coolest 13-year-old on the planet. I just, not today. But not today. At the time. At the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought you meant he was still 13. No, 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 no. No. Now, three years different. I mean, if he's out there, Zach, I'm around. Call me up. Yeah, yeah. Hook it up. Because yeah. Aerosmith is still touring, unbelievably. I think they are. Are they on tour right now, Aerosmith? We don't they're, know. they're like Kiss. Yeah. Yeah. They'll never yeah. stop. Yeah. Exactly. Zach's a, an amazing photographer right now. I, I bet. I on Facebook. Um, but... No, he he would write me love letters though. It was really sweet. Well, maybe his dad wrote them. <laughs> maybe his house was awesome too. It was like a castle. It was very cool. It had like old gothic things going on. All right. Well, let's steer this back to the entertainment yeah, world. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no. No. Missing. Oh, back in the day. You were at some thirteen-year-old's gothic mansion. I was this <laughs> this close to fame. <laughs> Now, what do you girl do you girls do um outside projects individually or is it always team? I mean, you guys have separate things you work on on your own. Like do you have a project? Do you have a project? Yeah, we, we have we some projects. We both work on other stuff, but this this year since we sort of since the IFC thing finished with the hub, we don't have as much time for all those other things cuz no. we're just like working nonstop on new stuff together. Um, What's yeah. in the future for you ladies? Um, domination. Yeah, world domination, <laughs> for sure. We well, just created a few boners in my... Because uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, what I like to do on this podcast is I want the crowd to go, we want to hear more. I, yeah, I hope yeah. so. We, we, so I want to give them a little game. teaser mm -hmm. before we end. Sure. You know, because yeah. right now I've done research... We're about the hour mark. Okay. This is definitely when my fans start to tune out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. Come back, fans. Come back. We have one more thing to say. You give a little taste. I know Brian Callan does like a 10-minute mm -hmm. with Crystalia and Will Sasso. Yeah. yeah. 
you know that's a teeny tiny podcast yeah, but they're great i love yeah, each and every one of those guys podcast. they're so funny they are just three nice dudes will sasso me and him are so big wrestling nice. he's such a cool yeah. guy yeah he uh went to uh, you know rowdy roddy piper the wrestler died and uh i had to host the uh memorial and uh, will sasso came and just it was he was just Aww. an amazing uh yeah. Amazing yeah, guy. He's a we sweetheart. just shot something with him and Brian a couple months ago, and he was mm-hmm. just uh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Brian's great. Yeah. Chris Lee is like, you know. I knew the other day when he was talking to a bunch of girls at the comedy store, and he grabbed my arm and said, you're one of my favorite people. Like, for him wow. to stop talking to girls. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You I've arrived. You power there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a good guy. Yeah. yeah. But enough about me. <laughs> What's next for you ladies? Um, well, we have a... Uh, just more web series in the pipeline. And you um, can't say, well, I mean, can you give us a little hint? Maybe comedy, drama? It's comedy. Oh, yeah, it's definitely comedy. And then, you know, hopefully knock on something. Oh, here, I found wood. Um, you know. <laughs> so, hardwood so for us. Um, something like a teen comedy feature that I'm supposed to be writing the outline for at this very moment. What do you mean? It's already done. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's we're already, already done. We have, yeah, a series in the works with ABC. Uh, that you feature. cannot talk about quite yet. We can't, we're close to being, but we can't say what it is, I think. Oh, it's all good. But, but stay, yeah. stay tuned. So we'll yeah, you, you For the next, more. can I get the exclusive? Yeah, you can. Oh, heck yeah. Because yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. trying, can I do audience warm up on the, uh, I'm pining for gigs now on my podcast. <laughs> this is like. You can be in it. You yeah. Can all right. You, you, yeah, do you do any acting? Um. Well, listen, I don't mean to brag. <laughs> but seeing that this is yeah, did shoot a commercial the other day. I did shoot a commercial mm-hmm. I've, 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 I'm in Rob Schneider's show on Netflix A couple episodes oh, awesome. And I am I do play the voice of uh, Barry Jelly And Tyler the Creator's The Jellies nice. Cartoon series mm-hmm. uh, Well so. you have a very sexy voice So I understand why It's a great baritone uh, phone sex voice yeah. mm-hmm. What are you wearing? Mm. Right. Maybe you and I could talk off the air. <laughs> so I can act if it's in my wheelhouse. Like, I could okay. be in any Expendables movie. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Dry, sarcastic. No, that's our wheelhouse, We've too. We've got you covered. Yeah, don't yeah. worry about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I got kicked out of a Sons of Anarchy audition. Because uh, I thought it would be... Because you showed up in the nude. Well, I took a risk. Yeah. As girls... It's a strong choice. I Well, let me ask you girls this. Uh, the role was for white supremacist number nine. Uh-huh. And they said, are you comfortable saying the N-word on camera? Uh-huh. And I'm like, and get paid? And then I had to say the, the line. And I'm right. not going to say that word. It's a horrible word. But yeah. uh, Although from Boston, you guys might uh, have heard it once or 500 times. Uh-huh. Uh, but the line was, I'm not selling guns to the Mayans and the... Right. The N words, yes. So I kept messing up the word Mayans so I could keep saying the N word over and over again. <laughs> and uh, I didn't get the gig, so. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Wendy O'Brien and Kurt Sutter, <laughs> for uh, not calling me back. Uh, so you guys got some things in the works uh, at ABC and and uh, the Hub. Is there like uh, what's what's going on with the Hub? The Hub, we we have big plans for season two and we just need to find a break in our schedules to shoot it yeah um but oh, that's absolutely so gonna happen we're gonna keep going because we love that yeah. show mm-hmm. any it's plans so for, fun to shoot. for like celebrity uh you know maybe simon baker now that he's not busy yeah <laughs> no a I, natural fit right i wrote yeah. a, a whole part for adam ray mm-hmm. um who i've met once or twice who's just fun and great fun. man yeah 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 he's good people yeah, he's uh, w- one of the good ones in this business, of which there are not many. All right, girls, I know we've done this once before, but if you know my fan base, uh, my fan base is the type that thinks uh, pro wrestling is real. Mm-hmm. Uh, where can Now, we're going to do this individually, because you guys have a lot of websites to cover. It's like, <laughs> I asked you for like your Twitter, and there's like seven different uh, at... Uh, so there's seven different 
Twitters, none of which we have more yeah. than seven followers but on. If you go to the website, you can connect to but I want the, the Facebook the and the Twitter, and it's only the website that matters. But right, but we're gonna do this because I want. I, I'm trying to help you girls out. It's yes, true. We're so, and we, we appreciate. All the we appreciate. All right, Claire, you go first. What is your individual Twitter thing where you want people to follow you? You know, whatever. C underscore Garrity and Garrity is spelled G E R E T Y underscore M O T T. That's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, I thought there was. I, 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 this is a long <laughs> fucking yeah. address. No wonder you only. I, I fucked up. <laughs> Katie. Um, well, let me think. Okay, so my Twitter is at this is Katie O K A T I E O. And um, my website is katielockobrien.com, L-O-C-K-E. How, well, how do you spell L-O-C-K-E? The whole thing? Okay. L-O-C-K-E. O-B-R-I-E-N, katielockobrien.com. Uh, Katie Lock O'Brien on Instagram. What else? is there facebook i could you have like facebook. a fan page or do you want people oh, going to your personal because there are a bazillion katie o'brien's in the world but the hub you can find us from the hub fan page and then the most important website is watch the hub.com that's where all the episodes are up all the info about us and the story and the, all the cool stuff so yeah watch it. my instagram is claire gm once very, again, very you got to spell it out for my fans. C L A I R E G M. That's M as in uh, M as in Macadoo. Yes, Macadamia. Right, <laughs> and uh, N as in no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, girls, I uh, well, I, and a shout out to uh, Jake Head who. Oh, uh, Jake Head. The funniest part of our show. You have to watch the series just for him. He fucking kills it. He's Jake is amazing. I've known him for uh, ten years, and uh, you yeah. just root Good for. Their, just if everyone in Hollywood could be like him, it'd be a better right? business. Mm -hmm. Solid guy. And so I'm. Awesome. Pretty sure you can follow him uh, at Jake Head. I'm assuming is his uh, uh, Twitter, yeah. but we'll, we'll, you, we'll, you'll figure that out on yeah. your own. This is about the girls, uh, Claire and Katie. This is not about. And uh, please rate and review us on iTunes. Inappropriate Earl, SoundCloud. I don't know if you can review things on there, but I'm just trying to make it, guys. Uh, and as a personal favor, uh, you know my bucket list guest is Gene Simmons from Kiss. So what I need all of you to do, and some of you have done it, but not many, at Gene Simmons on Twitter. Tell him to come on this show. I, all the fucking crappy Kiss products I bought in my life, he could spend an hour of his life on this couch, and we'll get to the real dirt. Uh, and Not the Motley Crue book. You guys should get in on that. They're trying to find writers for the Motley Crue biography, the book, oh, The Dirt. Ooh. Are you guys fans of that uh, genre of music? I am, yes, definitely. They need, a, I think, a, a female perspective. Okay. Because there are some great stories. It's I don't, uh, as you can tell, I'm not a deep reader. Mm -hmm. I mean, I it's either Tony Robbins or you know, like a, a the Billy Idol biography. Uh, and there are so many great stories. You know, at one point, Motley Crue was getting so many women, and they all had girlfriends, and they didn't want their girlfriends to know they were cheating on them. That Tommy Lee, and this is a true story, mm -hmm. would rub a burrito on his genitalia. Oh my god. To cover up the scent of all these other women. Mm -hmm. Now, as women, I'm assuming that if you went down, I won't say me, but like. Uh, On someone. Well, Katie, let's just say that this is an awful example. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's say your husband. No, but I will say this. Like, if I got there and it smelled like a burrito. Wouldn't that be. It's a... almost more alarming. Right. right. That would be a, a bigger concern. Like, if you go down, what's your husband's first name? Dave. This isn't. You're gonna see my acting chops uh, and why. Are we gonna play the scene? Okay. I'm ready. Uh, <clears throat> Let me get into character. Okay. Well, I'm gonna play you. Oh, great. Okay. And you're gonna play Dave. I'm Dave. So I've just rubbed a burrito. We're, right, and we're uh, let's just say uh, setting the scene. Uh, uh, make you know we're uh, fooling around. Uh, yeah. may, maybe I'm gonna go down there to. Uh, and uh, Claire, I'm gonna need you to uh, you know set the scene. Sound speed rolling. Lights, oh, camera, action. Right. Um, quiet all around. Quiet. We got quiet. And action. Hey, what's up? I've just come home from doing nothing wrong at all. Listen. You're looking good. Honey, I'm... Because <laughs> <laughs> this is also looking nothing. <laughs> uh, uh, honey, I'm so horny right now. 
I, I just, I have to have you. Can, can I just... This is so common. When I get home, yes, absolutely. You have the biggest package of any guy I've ever been with. I just need it in my mouth right now. Let's... Hold on, excuse me for one moment. I'm just going to go up to the kitchen. <laughs> Like the foley. Mm -hmm. Nothing's weird here. Let's do it. Zip. Uh, honey, uh, why do you smell like a burrito down here? Oh, that's not chipotle sauce. I promise. It's. Uh, uh, I don't even know what the hell this is. <laughs> that's a wrap. That's a wrap. And cut. And scene. Wait, Mark. No, seriously, like, what possible explanation is See, this would be me, though. I'd be like, oh, my God, this is delicious. <laughs> there you, the, the, <laughs> the best tasting meat I've ever had. <laughs> That's the scene right there. See? There you go. There you go. So if you're... I had a burrito for dinner last night. I bet. Chavo, yeah, but I didn't have a, a dick in my mouth. So, you know, sad. Well, more power to you. I mean, uh, I, 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 you know, I was offered oral sex the other night walking my dog, so... <laughs> Yeah, see, anything could happen in, yeah. in West Hollywood. Well, this guy was a great uh, salesman. He's like, I give the best blow job on Larrabee. And <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like, that's a bold statement. That is a bold statement. Yeah, but I, you know, if he had said on Wilshire, you probably would have believed him. But because it's Larrabee in West Hollywood, I don't know. Well, Larrabee is like the ground zero for, uh, yeah. it's like the real deal. And I was just... Uh, I just left the comedy store where I saw someone get killed. Uh, there was oh, a ki yeah. shooting there the other night. I was oh, there. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Wow. So uh, this podcast almost didn't happen. Wow. And by the way, I, I, feel, I feel I have to tell you this. Um, this is going to be episode 88 of Inappropriate Earl. Mm -hmm. um, That's I, infinity and infinity. Well, hopefully. This gets us to the next level. <laughs> uh, there have been two uh, Inappropriate Earl guests who are no longer with us. Wow. So... That's crazy. Uh, so just be careful. Yeah. Um, one was the great wrestler, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Uh, mm -hmm. That's he, awesome. he was uh, like, uh, I started to co-host his podcast and because uh, they needed me to, I love Roddy, but you know, sometimes he would, you know, like I would ask him a question about staying the wrestler. 15 minutes story is awesome. He's telling about this match they had at the Sportatorium in Dallas in 1987. And then he would just start talking about the Von Erich brothers. So I, they needed me to, like, you rein him in a little right, bit. Right, yeah. And uh, I miss him a lot. And then the I had uh, episode, I think, 15, the great... Uh, she had a show on, uh, I believe it was IFC. Uh, no, Sundance Channel, I'm sorry. Mm. The Legal Diva. She... Uh, left us uh too soon so uh i'm just saying be careful out there all right yeah. well thank you yes yes i mean when the, the day rowdy roddy passed uh i had fourteen thousand downloads that day so thank you roddy for i mean you know it's a cold business mm -hmm. i mean it's numbers yeah. and rowdy would appreciate that yeah. joke yeah. Unfortunately, we are we are not gonna die for you to get more hits so it would help the numbers that's yeah. all i'm saying um yeah so maybe you could yeah, get hit in the head. That's just not, not in our to-do list. Right well, now. I don't want you to die because, yeah. you know, I think... Eventually we'll die. Eventually. Not before we come back and give you the exclusive on our next Right, show. yeah. You, you want us as return guests. Well, I think we're going to be working together. I mean, you've, uh, you've clearly seen my acting chops. Yes, yes. No. You, you played Mostly. Katie exquisitely well. Honestly, yes. I forgot it wasn't me for a moment. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty amazing. Now, before I hit stop... I have an idea for a Halloween costume for somebody. Okay. Okay, I'm excited. What are your thoughts on Caitlyn Jenner? Fan? Not fan? Doesn't affect More you? More power to her. Yeah. Really? That's, you know, go girl. Yeah, I guess it is go girl now. Mm -hmm. How about this, though? Tell me this isn't the greatest idea ever. If this Halloween, Caitlyn Jenner goes as Bruce Jenner. Tell me that's yeah. not a money idea. I mean, it's just it's just easy. I just think it's too easy. She probably still has the clothes, you know, in the closet. It's not a stretch. That's a big closet. Yeah. I just I I feel like you know half and half that could be fun. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, one side go. of her face is Caitlyn, like one side is face. Bruce. Yeah. Right, right. Like mm-hmm. uh, Al Pacino in uh, the Dick Tracy movie. Yep. Yeah. Or like Aaron Eckhart or any yeah, yeah, yeah. face in, from Batman. You know, Batman. Oh, did I get the uh, the cartoon? I thought it was uh, uh, Dick Tracy. I thought Two Face was in Dick Tracy. Two-Face. No, Two Face is Batman. Batman. Uh, well, th- now you know I haven't made it in Hollywood. But, uh, there are a lot of. <laughs> I know nothing. Yeah. There are a lot yeah. of strong Dick Tracy characters. Also. In Hollywood, yeah. you know, Batman, actually comic book movies rule. So you just, you, you got to straighten that out and then you'll make it. That's I can't watch them. There's too much CGI. I, I, it's just like, yeah. you know, I like the. Uh, yeah. Right. That's why you watch Twerk. I, listen, <laughs> I, I'm a Dan Cook fan. I mean, uh, I got no problem with the guy. I mean, you know, I, no, I wish I've they would. I've seen w- Dan Cook. He's fun to watch live. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's like Kiss, you know. He's like you got to see him live, right. and then you get right. him. Yeah. So, but you know what? I'm critiquing Dan Cook, and I'm doing a podcast uh, on Saturday <laughs> afternoon. I think he's uh, he's doing okay. Yeah, I think he's fine. He doesn't need your plug, but he, you know, he might. He Listen, might. I don't know. It's a tough business. You couple bombs, and uh, you're on top of the world. Next day, you can't he's even. He's a asshole, though. He's from he's Massachusetts. Yeah, he's he's our people. Yeah, I mean, uh, who, who else? So you got the the Wahlberg clan. You mm-hmm. got Bill uh, Burr. Bill Burr's from Bill the Burr's South great guy. Mm-hmm. We did a show together where I, we didn't quite sync up in the beginning, but we got we got it on. But Massachusetts people are good people, yeah, and we're funny. Funny people from yeah, from our the, area. New Sarah England Silverman, area. Yeah. Uh, Adam Sandler. New England, go New England. Yes. Woo. I Pets. can't. Uh, I'm, I'm a Steeler guy, so I hate hate the Patriots because they're so good. Aww. Yeah, I know. They're great. I mean, I Tom know. Brady yeah, is like. So yeah. I want to yeah. interview his dick on this podcast. Yes. I don't want to interview him. Yes. Yes. No, what he would have. Yeah. What? He would have fascinating things to um, say. His dick would have fascinating things to say. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, <gasps> we could just re- replay our scene, but would also. Right, but live. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's got like the perfect life. He's the best player in the game. He's a pretty good looking dude. Giselle. I mean, <laughs> like, he gets to wear those. Every bit of everything about he, their lives. He is. is yeah. yeah. He's like a Greek god. He is yeah. legitimately just godlike. He's he, just winning life. Mm-hmm. I mean, only he could make those god awful plaid sport coats. Like, he can wear hip. anything. He can oh. wear anything. Like, if I wore those, I would look like a, a sports reporter from the 70s. Yes. Pam, it's like, God, I got to get that jacket. Right. (laughs) God bless you, Tom Brady. Well, (laughs) Katie, Clara, I was a little nervous before this podcast. So, like, what am I going to talk to about these girls? I mean, I don't know anything about them. I mean, the hub, you got some nice bios. uh, But, you know, it's like, okay, that'll take about 10 minutes to get through. And here we are uh, an hour and 20 minutes later. We've gone over your careers, Indiegogo projects, Quiet Riots documentary, uh, dating sites, uh, HIV. Everything. Didn't I say that? Didn't I say? You just ask us questions and we'll just answer. But see, this is what I wish most podcasts were like. Just hit record and like we're at a bar talking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, how bad would this interview have been if I just... So, tell me about the hub. (laughs) No, we appreciate you. This is much more fun. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm no Brian Callen, but I mean, I'm trying. No, yeah, I mean, there's only one. Right. Th- there is yeah. only one. There's one Earl. There's one Brian. You know. There's, there's one Claire. There's, there's one Katie. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, we were we're gonna have you back real soon when when you talk about your projects and when you drop out the scripts for my one line. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, exactly. you know, I went to acting school. I went to the uh, Sylvester Stallone uh, Cobra, uh, just acting based on how he acted in Cobra. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's an acting dojo. Which. Mm-hmm. Okay helped me out have you ever seen the movie cobra parts of it but not the whole thing well you're missing out yes but I'm you know gonna get on that. Do that yeah this is la yeah you see celebrities everywhere mm-hmm. and uh about two years ago i'm at the ralph's on uh, olympic in century city and i look over and i see brian thompson who is a very famous character actor because he's got a unique jaw he's, mm-hmm. he's very distinct and I was like, oh, my God, that's the guy from, that's the bad guy from Cobra. So I walked right up to him, and I recited his line at the end of Cobra when he dies. And he kind of looked at me like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, you won't kill me, will you, pig? And uh, he, he didn't really get it. Yeah. So. 
He's like, oh, did I say that in that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, but then I, I see, I thought in my way I was paying tribute to him. Like, hey, I'm right. such a, right. such a big right. fan of yours. Yeah. I'm reciting a movie quote from a movie 86, so that's 20, I mean, literally almost 30 years ago. And then it hit me, well, I'm ignoring his last 30 years of work. Right. Yeah, well, but if Cobra trumps all other possible work, well, he was. And future, then you're not wrong. Here, listen. What I will say is that if any of your listeners come up to me and quote one of Whoa. my lines, oh, yeah. oh, my I will give them a huge hug and kiss, probably. That would be amazing. Because that's you're like, single. That's like you're, you've yeah. made it. Yeah. If people are quoting lines at you that you've said, <sighs> amazing. True. Like last night, I was having drinks at the Bel Air Hotel. I'm not, I just I have to get this out. No, no big deal. I only get the Diet Red Bull, so it's only $12 there. <laughs> and the guy came up to me and said, you were in the movie Bench Warmers, weren't you? Nice. He was a waiter. He was a gay waiter. He's probably See? trying to... F and you gave him a huge hug and kiss, right? No, I'm not really... I don't fly that way. Oh, okay, right. Sorry. And there's nothing wrong with flying that way. Yeah. No, of course not. I mean, I haven't gotten to the point of having so many women in my life where I want the schwanz. So... <laughs> right. That's, you know, like David Lee Roth. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, David Lee Roth has slept with like, you know, seven, eight thousand women. I mean, literally. Yeah, and, it's, right. so, and, you know, he's rumored to like maybe have a weenie or two. And I don't think that's gay. I think that's boredom. Yeah. Yeah. That's just like I've that. done it all. What every, else? Yeah. Fine. Why not? Like in 2015, David Lee Roth probably has to stick his dick in a cheese grater to get going. Uh, you know. Right. Right. I'm not yeah. at that level yet. No. I mean, I've been with some chicks. Don't get me wrong. No, I I believe you. I mean, God. I mean, funny, relatively good-looking guy. Uh, you know, got it going on. Mm -hmm. I clearly you have, have a, that sexy voice. Great right. voice. Yeah, I'm sure you phone sex so many ladies. Let's just say my voice has caused a lot of panties to drop. Mm -hmm. I'm just, now we're now we're getting silly. <laughs> Uh, girls, thank you so much. This thank is, you, Earl. This thank is you. so much fun. Yeah. This has been Inappropriate Earl with Claire and Katie from The Hub Woo! Series. Please watch thehub.com. Support these ladies. You got their Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. I mean, it's like I want this to be a little circle where everyone supports each other. And then when you actors out there, you know, maybe who knows? You, you know, anything. The whole point of this podcast was you can take one idea in your living room and make it a successful series that leads to a show on ABC that leads to who knows. So don't ever give up your dreams. This has been uh, Tony Robbins and L. Ron Hubbard's, uh, you know, uh, I want to do a negative. One more thing before I let you guys go. <laughs> go for it. And I know you girls got to go in no. production meetings and, and what. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yes. And I might have you girls shoot this for me because I want to do a uh, – maybe just starts off as a short. And instead of Tony Robbins' personal thinker, per personal positive thinker, how about Tony Bobbins' negative thinker? Good. I like it. I like it. Let's you th do it. You think you can do whatever you want to do in your life? You can't. Have you seen you? Yeah. <laughs> no way. Look at you. Mm -hmm. You fat loser. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, inappropriate Earl. SoundCloud on iTunes. And iTunes. SoundCloud is not on iTunes. <laughs> SoundCloud, iTunes. Rate and review us. I leave all the bad ones up. Uh, but it helps us, you know, get up the food chain to, like, at least the top 3,800. And uh, I can't thank the girls enough. This will be out Monday. Because we got to let that Bobby Rock episode breathe a little. Okay. That's uh, industry uh, talk. And uh, we'll have uh, Jake Head will come back. Uh, we got Mr. Belding coming on. Uh, Ooh, the, awesome. the great Dennis Haskins, uh, Kip Brennan, a former NHL hockey player, will talk about his uh, you know days uh, being a tough guy in the, in the NHL. And uh, we got some special guests, possibly David Lee Roth, possibly, but uh, who knows? I know he's. Uh, let's just say this: he's in the West Hollywood area frequently. Wink, wink. <laughs> and uh, get Eddie. Oh, uh, Eddie Van Halen, I would come for that. I'm trying to get Eddie Van Halen. I've made overtures. I just their show at the bowl was fucking awesome. It was so much fun. Well, here's the thing. I was there. Oh, good. I didn't see you. Oh, I didn't know you. What you didn't know? Yeah. Here's my thing about my review of the Van Halen show from a visual perspective is, uh, 
Uh, David Lee Roth now looks like Carol Channing. <laughs> a little bit, yes. Um, but he was so far away from me because I had far away seats, so it was fine. I mean, Eddie Van, Han- Eddie Van Halen looks like the mom from Throw Mama from the Train. <laughs> But still kills the guitar. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. His solo, oh, and I had just been to the ACDC show, and Angus Young's solo was fantastic. But then Eddie Van Halen like soloed him under the, I mean, under the table, just like. Oh yeah. And Alex Van Halen looks like the guy who shot Pacino at the end of Scarface. I mean, it just yes, yes. that's a deep reference. But if you're mm-hmm. a fan of the movie Scarface. Which I saw uh, last Saturday at Exposition Park. It's very oh, cool. Fun. Uh, Way fun. Yeah. And the greatest thing ever is Stephen Bauer. Is, uh, if mm-hmm. you're a fan of the movie Scarface, yeah, you know he yeah, played yeah. Manny Manolo. Mm-hmm. He came out drunk. I mean, he was gone. <laughs> yes. And it, amazing. He comes out to interview before they start the movie, and the first thing he says is he puts his hand on his dick. Leans back on the chair like he's almost falling off the chair. And is like, hey, I got to be somewhere else, but uh, enjoy the movie. <laughs> so L.A. Very oh, L.A. That's and then amazing. I screamed out at the top of my lungs, I loved you and Gleaming with the Cube with Christian Slater. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, he said, who said that? I think I sobered him up real right, fast. Right. <laughs> Follow Stephen Bauer on Twitter, whatever right, he right, is. Right. He Sorry, was, we, we got into a whole other thing. Got a whole thing. He was it nice was, to me at the comedy store mm-hmm. one night. I asked him. He was great on Ray Donovan. Uh, mm-hmm. he, yeah. he plays uh, Avi, the uh, henchman to uh, Liv Schreiber. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, follow Stephen Bauer. Uh, watch Gleaming the Cube. Netflix it or something. He needs yeah. From the looks of it, he needs the cash. So uh, inappropriate Earl, always wanting to leave on an awkward note and... How much more awkward can you get than a drunk Stephen Bauer <laughs> introducing Scarface Exposition Park? Join me next Friday at Pacific Palisades Park where I'll be watching Nightmare on Elm Street uh, with the great Robert England. That is all. And I'm